In Thor Ragnarok, do you remember this scene where Thor and Doctor Strange are talking? If you knew where he was, why didn't you call me? I don't have a phone. No, I don't have a, a phone, but you could have sent a electronic letter. It's called an email. Yeah, do you have a computer? No, what for? You might be wondering how Thor knows about emails. Well, look at this small clip from Civil War Team Thor where Thor becomes a YouTuber. Daryl here is helping me craft an electronic letter. I'm writing to Captain America and Iron Man. There seems to be something very intense going on. This is when Thor learns what emails are. Connect four. Why did Tony need to press his chest to activate his nanotech suit? Unlike Peter, who can activate his suit whenever he wants. Uh, man. This is because in Iron Man 3, after the Chitari attack, Tony developed severe PTSD. It got so bad that he once activated his suit in his sleep and nearly hurt Pepper. <clears throat> Power down. So, to prevent this from happening again, Tony designed his new suits with a manual activation switch. Because Tony Stark always Go f yourself. In the ending of Avengers Infinity War, remember when Thanos said to Thor that he should have gone for the head. You should have gone for the head. Well, it turns out Thor actually did aim for Thanos' head because if we look at this clip from Civil War Team Thor. A whole lot of information and ideas and what I like to call little clues. Who is the man in the purple chair? He's purple. He's a magic glove. Doesn't like standing up. So Thor really did aim for Thanos' head, he just didn't expect Thanos to be standing up. And in Endgame, the reason Thor managed to unalive Thanos is because he is sitting down. <laughs> in Avengers Endgame, did you know how Tony came up with the idea to steal the stones instead of trying to pull the gauntlet off? Well, if we look at this scene where Captain Marvel fights Thanos, You can clearly see that Captain Marvel is overpowering Thanos until he removes the Power Stone to punch her. This is the moment Tony realizes they can remove the stones instead of pulling the gauntlet off. I... You stupid n Did you know that Loki is like a walking Infinity Gauntlet since he has all the powers that the Infinity Stones possess, except for the Soul Stone? He has energy blasts like the Power Stone. Teleportation like the Space Stone. Enchant, which is mind control similar to Mind Stone. Creation abilities like the Reality Stone. And time reversal similar to the Time Stone. Do you need more proof? Go f yourself. In Ant-Man and the Wasp, do you remember this scene where Agent Wu asks Scott for dinner? I'll be seeing you again. Where? Where will you be seeing me again? Like, in general, I'll see, like, the next time you do something bad, I'll, did you want to grab dinner or something? I mean, because I'm free. Well, after a long time, he actually did it in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. For the stuff that really matters, like friends. Your money's no good here. Oh, man. Oh, you're racist. Did you know that before Avengers Infinity War, Tony Stark had already invented nanotech? Here is a deleted scene from Iron Man 2. Okay. Damn it. I hate this thing. My nanoball? It was likely removed because they wanted to show Tony Stark's nanotech as a surprise in Infinity War. I don't want to play with your ball. In Iron Man 3, Harley says this to Tony. I would have added in um, the retro... Retro reflective panels? To make him stealth mode. Tony actually takes this advice and uses it in his jet. If you look at this scene in Spider-Man Homecoming... Retro reflective panels engaged. The jet uses the reflective panel that Harley mentioned. In Avengers Infinity War, 
Why did Thanos remove his armor after obtaining the Power Stone? No other being has ever had the might. The Power Stone is pure energy that enhances everything, and it could have also amplified Thanos' ego together with his physical strength. That's why he felt he no longer needed the armor, believing he now possessed the strongest power he could have. Trespassing in this city and on this planet. He means get lost, Squidward. He exhausts me. In the ending of Avengers Endgame, when Cap goes back in time to return the stones. You ready, Cap? All right, we'll meet you back here, okay? Notice that he looks back for a second. This is because, at this time, he has already planned to stay in the past and is checking if his old self has already arrived. So did something go wrong or did something go right? When he sees his old self, he knows that his plan worked. All right, we'll meet you back here, okay? In Avengers Infinity War, Doctor Strange said he saw 14 million possibilities and they only won once. To view alternate futures, to see all the possible outcomes of the coming conflict. How many did you see? 14 million, 605. How many did we win? One. The reason why it's such a high number is because most of these failed possibilities are caused by this rat. Oops, sorry, not that rat, this one. Most of the futures Doctor Strange saw where they lose is because this rat keep missing the button that release Ant-Man from Quantum Realm. What the hell happened here? In Avengers Endgame, when the team is preparing for the time heist, why is Rhodey the only one who wears his suit instead of using nanotech like everyone? So he's an idiot. Well, that's because at this time, Rhodey is still paralyzed from his fall in Civil War. And can't walk properly without the help of his suit, so he needs to wear it at all times. Are you Tony Stank? Like you? In Spider-Man 2, look at this scene. Strong focus on what I want. When Peter says, I need to focus, he literally hits a Ford Focus car. In Avengers Endgame, look at this scene. I think so. Someone's gonna need to amend that and stop saying that. Notice that Thor only puts the eye drop in one of his eyes because his other eye was destroyed by Hela in Thor Ragnarok and was replaced by a robotic eye by Rocket in Infinity War. They gave you his eye. No, he gave me a hundred credits. I snuck in Avengers Endgame, when the Avengers infiltrate the tower, look at this scene. Cap, things look like they're just about wrapped up here. Got it. I'm approaching the elevator now. If you look closely, you can see that Tony was able to scan the whole team except for Iron Man. Here. Got it. I'm approaching. The elevator now. This shows how advanced Tony's old suit was, as even his future self wasn't able to scan him. That suit did nothing for your ass. Why are you gay? Did you know that Tony Stark doesn't like things being handed to him? He doesn't like to be handed things. Yeah, I have a peeve. Uh, I, got I, I don't like people handing me things. If you just drop that there, that'd be But Howard, his dad, did that exact same thing, and Ma Boy is flabbergasted. Thanks. Hold this, will you? Yeah, sure. In the ending of Avengers Endgame, Peter's suit gets damaged very badly. But if you look closely, you can see that underneath his Iron Spider suit is his original suit from the start of Infinity War. I don't know how you're gonna get it through all of that. It's great that the directors didn't forget this tiny detail since at the start of Infinity War, Peter is already wearing his original suit when Tony give him the nanotech suit. At the start of Captain America, the first Avenger, Howard Stark says this. Should withstand your average German bayonet, I'm just not gonna attack you with a pocket knife. The funny thing is, this is exactly what a Hydra member does at the end of the movie, attacking him with a pocket knife. In the ending of Avengers Endgame, look at this scene. Don't do anything stupid till I get back. How can I? You're taking all the stupid with you. This is actually Bucky pulling his Uno reverse card on Cap. Don't do anything stupid until I get back. 
How can I? Taking all the stupid with you. Stupid? At the start of Iron Man 3, look at this scene. My chances. That's risky. At least let me get you like a... If you look closely, you can see these strange red metal parts. This is actually an early hint at the Hulkbuster suit that Tony will later use against the Hulk in Age of Ultron. Why did Thanos wait until Infinity War to collect all the Infinity Stones? While it's mainly because he didn't yet know the location of the Soul Stone, I think he also waited until Odin died. Odin, being the protector of the Nine Realms and one of the strongest beings in the universe, would have been a significant obstacle. With Odin's long experience in war, Thanos couldn't have acted against him effectively. <laughs> even that I'm gonna kick your ass in spider-man homecoming look at this scene you got to get better at this part of the job hey that's gonna dissolve in two hours but in spider-man no way home dr. strange says this don't do this I've been dangling over the Grand Canyon for 12 hours I know I know I know I think when Tony created the spider-man suit he noticed that Peter's web fluid dissolved quickly so he created his own web fluid that now lasts for 12 hours you got a bridge I know what a girl sound like I'm not a girl no, excuse me it's ma'am bruh it is ma'am in Avengers Endgame there's this deleted scene how long did you fight these guys about two or three hours the Chitauri the suckiest army in the galaxy why don't you just blow up the mothership I think they removed it because they didn't want to diminish the hardships the Avengers faced in fighting the Chitauri army in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 1 look at this scene some spiders change colors to blend into their environment the spider ability that Peter mentions is an early hint for us because it's the same exact ability that Miles Morales has in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man turned invisible? Not in my universe. Ah, you just poked me in my eye. Listen, look, and listen, and learn. In Avengers Infinity War, why did Thanos send his minions to get the Mind Stone from Vision? Wanda. Ah! Well, Vision is actually too strong for Thanos and could potentially defeat him. If you look here, Ultron was able to one-shot Thanos. Fascinating. It's enough slicing! That's why Thanos chose to send his expendable troops first to try and get the stone before taking it himself. In Avengers Infinity War, listen to the background music when Tony gets a call from Pepper. Yeah. God, no, please tell me. You're Honey, not I'm sorry. I'm so the music is the same as when Steve Rogers sacrifices himself in his first movie and calls Peggy. I don't know what to do. There's not enough time. This thing's moving too fast and it's heading for New York. The difference is that Cap didn't return, but Tony did. Well, everyone else died, so there's that. At the start of Avengers Endgame, when Tony and Nebula are stuck in space. You don't need to do that. The reason Nebula reacts like this when Tony score is because she was always punished by Thanos whenever she lost to Gamora. My father would have Gamora and me battle one another in training. Every time my sister prevailed, my father would replace a piece of me with machinery. That's why she becomes defensive thinking Tony might hurt her if she loses. Fair game. Good sport. You fun? It was fun. In Avengers Age of Ultron, when Tony fights the Hulk, the first version of the Hulkbuster has 11 arc reactors and isn't very efficient as Hulk was able to rip it apart. So, in Infinity War, Tony redesigned the Hulk Buster, which Bruce uses, with just one giant arc reactor in the back. Hulk. Hulk. Ah! In Captain America Civil War, when Tony is recruiting Spider-Man, he says this. Wow, nice catch. 3,000 pounds, 40 miles an hour. It's not easy. Tony said this because he did the same exact thing in Iron Man 1 and got absolutely demolished. Pretty cool, huh? In Avengers Age of Ultron, look at this scene. 
Notice that Tony is the only one who isn't affected. This is because he became immune to sonic attacks after experiencing them once before. You are gay. In Iron Man 1, look at this scene. It's completely normal. It's so fast, but if you slow it down, you can actually see that before firing the blaster, there's some kind of energy already emitting from Tony's hands. In Spider-Man No Way Home, how was Ned able to open a portal using a sling ring easily, whereas even Doctor Strange had a hard time doing it for the first time? I just wish we could see Peter. Well, if we look at this scene. How did you know you were made of magic? Because my, my Nana says that we have it in our family, and sometimes I get these tinglings in my hands. You should talk to your physician. It's funny, but it shows that Ned really has an innate talent for all things magical. In Avengers Endgame, when Tony and Nebula are stuck in space, they play paper football. That was close. <laughs> this actually helps Tony later in the movie because when they time travel to the past, Tony needed to flick Ant-Man accurately to the briefcase. Flick me. <laughs> in Avengers Endgame, when the Avengers infiltrate the tower, look at this scene. If you look closely, you can see a suit helmet on the table. If we go back to Avengers 1, you can see the same helmet on the table. Stalling me won't change anything. No, no, no. These two scenes are eight years apart, but they still included this tiny detail. Now that's what attention to detail is all about. At the start of Captain America Civil War, you can see Cap's armor has the Avengers logo on his shoulder. It's but during the airport battle, as things start falling apart, you can actually see that he removes the Avengers logo from his armor. Help your brother out. You're after the wrong, wrong guy. Your judgment is In Captain America the First Avenger, when Steve tries to save everyone from the grenade. Grenade! If you pay attention, you can also see Peggy in the background running towards it. She's also ready to sacrifice herself for everyone, which hints at how she's worthy of being Captain Carter in another universe. Oh! oh! He needs some milk! In Doctor Strange, before Strange has his accident, look at this scene. I've got a 35-year-old Air Force colonel, crushed his lower spine in some kind of experimental armor. Yeah, well, I could help, but so could 50 other people. Find me something worth my time. Many people thought this was Rhodey after his fall in Civil War. But this person is actually the pilot from Hammer Tech who got twisted hard by the bootleg Iron Man suit. Oh! Oh! He needs some milk! In Spider-Man No Way Home, when Electro appears. How you like the new new? For a few seconds, his lightning creates what looks like a mask. How you like the new new? This is a reference to his actual costume in the comics. In the start of Avengers Infinity War, when Loki tries to stab Thanos. You might wonder where Loki got the knife. It looks like he creates it from thin air, but Loki doesn't have that kind of ability. Actually, he already has the knife in his hand the whole time, but he hides it using illusion. You can see here that his hands look like he's holding a knife. He might want to guide. In Thor Ragnarok, when Thor saw Loki talking to other people, He is actually referring to the first Thor movie where, in the end, Loki unsubscribe himself to life. No. No. You can actually see the wormhole in the background, which also explains why he didn't die. In Spider-Man No Way Home, when Toby cures Sandman. If you pay attention, the cure for Sandman is actually a smaller version of the machine from Spider-Man 3. This just reverses the effect of the sandification from that machine. In Avengers Endgame, look at this scene. It's, it's dead. What? What's weird is that Scott goes inside the van, and then a few moments later... I have to hotwire it. You can also see his large-sized body fighting outside. I have to hotwire it. In Iron Man 2, after defeating Whiplash, Tony analyzes Vanko's arc reactor. 
it shows that Vanco's arc reactor is outputting 1.8 gigajoules of energy. But the one Tony created in a cave with scraps is producing 3 gigajoules. My math is right. I don't know what it is. 3 gigajoules per second. This shows how smart Tony is to be able to create his arc reactor on the first try, which is twice as strong as Vanco's, despite Vanco putting his whole life into creating it. Impossible. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. In Thor Ragnarok, look at this scene. All right, I yield. Why is Thor so sure that this is actually Loki? Well, if this were the real Odin, he wouldn't just move out of the way. He will just catch me near since Odin is also considered worthy. Father. In Avengers Age of Ultron, look at this scene. Please be my guest. <laughs> you have seen this before, right? Hawkeye says he's already seen it before. This is a reference to the first Thor movie where Thor tries to lift Mjolnir but isn't able to and Hawkeye is watching from above. In Avengers Age of Ultron, look at this scene. Come on, Cap. Here, Cap is only able to move the hammer a little because he's not fully worthy yet. At this point in time, Cap knows who killed Tony Stark's parents but hasn't told him and that's what makes him not fully worthy yet. In Avengers Infinity War, look at this scene. I like you. The reason Thanos respects Peter is because Peter was willing to sacrifice what he loved for the greater good, which is exactly what Thanos did to get the Soul Stone. Die for that. Oh my god. Oh my god. In Thor Ragnarok, look at this scene. Odin's treasures. Fake. So, why did Odin have a fake infinity gauntlet in his vault? This was because Odin, as the protector of the Nine Realms, wanted to trick anyone who tried to use the stones into coming to Asgard, where they would be destroyed by the Asgardian army. This could have tricked Thanos, but by the start of Infinity War, Asgard had been already destroyed by Surtur. In Avengers Endgame, did you know that Nebula indirectly caused Black Widow's death? We know that to get the Soul Stone, you need to sacrifice what you love. But is it a coincidence that Hawkeye and Natasha paired up to retrieve the stone? Nebula knew about the required sacrifice but didn't tell the team. And I think she was the one who suggested that Clint and Natasha go together without warning them. He came back with the soul stone. She did it. In Avengers Endgame, remember this scene. It's heartbreaking, but it's even more so for Clint. With his superhuman eyesight, he can clearly see Natasha's dead body from that height. That's also why he look away immediately since he can see all of her broken bones and her lifeless face clearly. In the Avengers, look at this scene. When Loki mind controls Hawkeye, you can see that he shoots the gun like he's shooting his arrows. In Spider-Man 3, remember this scene. This is the part where Eddie becomes Venom, but do you know who caused it? Well, if we go back and look at this. You want forgiveness? Get religion. What's going on here? So the whole reason why Eddie is in the chapel praying is because of Peter telling him to get religion. In Spider-Man 3, remember this scene. What's weird is how Peter, a broke college student, was able to pay for that suit. Well, if we go back to moments before, you can see that this shop has a big sale going on. In Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 1, look at this scene. Notice that when Green Goblin breaks Peter's web, it sounds like metal. This shows how really strong Peter's web is, that it is comparable to or even stronger than metal. Misery, misery, misery. In the ending of Spider-Man No Way Home, when Peter visits MJ. Uh, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can see that MJ still wears the broken black dahlia necklace Peter gave her in Far From Home. So maybe MJ still remembers Peter, but she does not know what he looks like. Spider-Man? 
In the ending of Avengers Endgame, during Tony Stark's funeral, his daughter says this. What do you want? Cheeseburgers. You know, your dad like cheeseburgers. Okay. This is actually a very touching moment because in Iron Man 1, Tony says this. I've been in Chill. captivity for three months. There are two things I want to do. I want an American cheeseburger. You have to have a burger. Yeah. Well, come on. In Captain America Civil War, how can Vision fly here? Well, Vision has the ability to increase or decrease the weight of his body, so he changes his weight to be so light that he can float. You can actually see here that whenever he flies, his body becomes a little transparent. In Thor Ragnarok, look at this scene. Strongest Avenger. Access denied. Point break. Welcome, Point Break. The reason Point Break works is because, in Avengers 1, Tony mocks Thor by using it. No hard feelings, Point Break. You got a mean swing. In Avengers Endgame, Ant-Man comes out of the quantum realm after five years, but for him, it's just five hours. I'm sorry, that must have been a very long five years. Yeah, but that's just it. For me, it was five hours. However, when Janet was inside for 30 years, she still aged 30 years. This is because Ant-Man fell into a time vortex while Janet just lived her life normally in the quantum realm. And don't get sucked into a time vortex. We won't be able to save you. In Thor Ragnarok, look at this scene. We know each other. He's a friend from work. This dialogue was actually created by a kid watching on the set. A young kid on set who was uh, unwell at the time and had come to visit. And he was on the sideline. He's like, why don't you say, look up at, at Loki in the crowd. So he's, he's a friend from work. He's a friend from work. If Odin was supposed to be the protector of the Nine Realms, why didn't he help against Loki in Avengers 1? Well, he actually did help, but because the Bifrost was broken after Thor 1, he couldn't send his army. However, he still used most of his dark energy to send his strongest combatant, which is Thor. With the Bifrost gone, how much dark energy did the Old Father have to muster to conjure you here? In Avengers Endgame, how did Tony Stark come up with the idea to steal the stones instead of the gauntlet? At the start of the fight, everyone is fighting to get the gauntlet, but when this happens... <laughs> Thanos removes the Power Stone to fight Captain Marvel. This is the moment Tony notices that he can just remove the stones instead of pulling off the gauntlet. In Spider-Man Homecoming, look at this scene. Everyone was impressed. Come on! Happy honked because they almost hit something. But if you pay attention, you can see that Peter's spidey sense already noticed it, which is why he looked forward twice. Everyone was impressed. Come on! In Captain America Civil War, look at this scene. That is awesome, dude! After Falcon grabs Spider-Man, Bucky is in the way of the cameraman, so he does this sick spin move to avoid hitting the camera. That is awesome, dude! You have the in Avengers Endgame, Tony and Nebula are stuck in space for more than 20 days. So how was Tony able to survive without water? Well, if we look at this scene from Iron Man 2, you you just keep the I know, it has a filtration yeah, system. You could drink that water. Tony filters his pee and uses it as a source of water. Disgusting! In Iron Man 1, look at this scene. It's completely harmless. It's so fast, but if you slow it down, you can actually see how the energy from the arc reactor goes from Tony's chest to his hand blasters. In Iron Man 1, Tony accidentally discovers his blasters. I thought you said you were done making weapons. It is. This is a flight stabilizer. Completely harmless. He initially said they were just to maneuver his flight capability, but when he tries them, they shoot a strong blast. This is the moment Tony realizes the weaponry capability of these blasters. If he hadn't realized this, he might have just mounted his suit with guns like War Machine. Completely harmless. In Avengers 1, when Tony sacrifices himself to destroy the mothership of the Chitauri army and just barely escapes the wormhole, Jarvis actually saves his life here. You can see that Jarvis removes his shoulder pad, giving him just enough push to go back outside the portal. There's actually an episode of What If where Tony doesn't escape the wormhole because Jarvis doesn't remove his shoulder pad. Tony never made it home.
In Spider-Man Far From Home, when this drone is trying to find MJ and Happy, why didn't it just use a thermal scanner to know they are in the back? Tony's drone should be advanced enough to have this, right? Well, if we go back to moments before and look at this scene. This guard was able to damage the drone, disabling its thermal scanner. You can also see it here, indicating that the thermal scan is unavailable. In Avengers Age of Ultron, Tony Stark uses the Hulkbuster. So, what makes the Hulkbuster really strong? It's not just the size, but also the power output. If we look at its body, it has a total of 11 arc reactors. <laughs> In context, each arc reactor is equivalent to the output of three nuclear power plants. My math is right. I don't know what it is. Three gigajoules per second. So the Hulkbuster has the power output of 33 nuclear power plants. In Iron Man 2, look at this scene. Congratulations on the opening ceremonies. They were such a success, as was your Senate hearing. If you look closely, we can see the Mark I in the background. The suit Tony used to escape the cave but it's labeled as a reconstruction since he wasn't able to retrieve the original. This shows how sentimental Tony is about his suits. Wake up, Daddy Shum. Say Daddy's home! All of Tony Stark's suits have their own arc reactor except the Mark I. We all know how smart Tony is, so it doesn't make sense for him to use his chest arc reactor to power his suits since it could lose power and kill him. That's why he puts separate arc reactors in his suits. This is also why Rhodey was able to steal one of Tony's suits since it was powered by its own reactor. Aloha, cowboy. Shut it down! In Iron Man 2, when Pepper throws the suitcase to Tony. If you look closely, you'll notice that there's also a foothole on the other side. This means that even if Pepper had thrown the briefcase in a different direction, Tony would still be able to wear it, because the briefcase learns from his mistakes. In the Avengers movie, when Tony talks to Hawkeye, You got a lot of stray stuff in your tail. Just trying to keep him off the streets. But they can't bank with a damn. Find a tight corner. I will roger that. You can see in Tony's heads-up display that as soon as he says, I will roger that, Jarvis has already found a place to make a hard turn. Find a tight corner. I will roger that. This shows how advanced Jarvis is, doing things right away without Tony needing to explicitly tell him. In Iron Man 3, Tony got ejected and gets stranded in Tennessee. Jarvis, not my idea. It is snowing and he almost frees to death. After this, Tony now puts a heating feature on all of his suits, including Spider-Man's. I mean, did you put a tracker in my suit or something? I put everything in your suit, including this heater. Whoa. In Thor 1, Odin said this to Loki and Thor. Only one of you can ascend to the throne, but both of you were born to be kings. This was in 2011, and at first, people thought it only applied to Thor since he was destined to rule Asgard. But 13 years later, in Loki Season 2, Loki didn't just become the king of the Nine Realms, but the king of the entire multiverse. This proves that what Odin said is actually true. They both were destined to become kings. I know what kind of god I need to be. For you. For all of us. In Infinity War, why did Hulk refuse to come out? No! I'll screw you, you big green asshole! Many people think it's because Hulk got afraid after losing to Thanos. And his name is John C. But the actual reason is that he's tired of always fighting for Banner and despite everything he's done for Earth, people still hate him. In Age of Ultron, when Tony and Banner talk, I can harness this power, apply it to my Iron Legion protocol. That's a man-sized if. if. Our job is if. If you look closely for a brief second, you can see the stretchy pants being made by Stark and Banner. This is why Bruce doesn't lose his pants whenever he transforms into the Hulk. And 
naked. He's very naked. That's it's in my brain now. In Age of Ultron, when Tony fights the Hulk using the Hulk Buster, he says this. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. The reason he says this is that if we look back at his head display, you can see that Veronica activated a sedative. Come on, Bruce. You gotta work with me. Then in this scene. You can clearly see that Tony sprays this sedative on the Hulk. In the ending of Age of Ultron, when Tony, Thor, and Steve are talking, Steve actually breaks the fourth wall here. Job in the last few years. It's not a coincidence. If you look closely, you can see that Steve moves slightly to the left because the cameraman is in the way. Job in the last few years. It's not a coincidence. In the Loki series, when Mobius is showing Loki his memories, you can see the scepter going through Agent Coulson's chest. However, if we look at the Avengers movie, you'll notice that the tip of the scepter isn't shown. Want to find out? This is because they needed to censor that part for the movie, but censorship rules are more relaxed for the series. Want to find out? In Avengers Endgame, when Hawkeye is testing time travel, he brings this baseball glove back with him. Many people think he just wants to keep a memory from his past, but he deliberately shows this to Stark and Black Widow, telling them it works. Work. Work. This is because Tony asked Clint to bring something from the past to their present because this is also a test to ensure they could use this strategy to bring the Infinity Stones from the past. In Spider-Man No Way Home, when Peter is on the bridge and a helicopter is following him. Hi. Yeah, I can see you. This chopper is actually live streaming all his movements because he's big news by that time and if you look moments later. There's a girl watching something on her iPad while well, she's actually watching the live stream that the helicopter is broadcasting. Okay. You can also see her reaction when she realizes it. Okay. In Thor Ragnarok, why was Thor affected by this collar if he's the god of thunder? I Well, this is called the obedience disc. It doesn't produce shock waves like many people think. Instead, it activates all the pain receptors in a human body, so it doesn't really matter how strong you are. In Iron Man 2, if you look at this scene, Ever since you came here, <laughs> Natasha, instead of immediately getting scared, assumes a fighting stance. Remember, at this point, Natasha has not yet been revealed as Black Widow, but the directors didn't forget to add this tiny detail to ensure proper character establishment. Did you know that Thanos' idea of saving the universe is flawed from the start? Titan was like most planets. Too many mouths, not enough to go around. He claimed that his planet Titan was dying due to overpopulation and proposed to kill half of the people. And when we faced extinction, I offered a solution. Genocide. But random. However, when the Guardians reach Titan, Star-Lord says this. What the hell happened to this planet? It's eight degrees off its axis. So the true reason for the death of Titan was not due to overpopulation, but because the planet's axis was off. Not so strong now, huh? You're stupid, In Civil War, when Wanda tries to escape the compound with Clint, this happens. <sighs> It seems like Hawkeye is punching metal, but we all know that Vision can change the density of his body. Here, he changes his body to be strong enough so Clint can't hurt him, but not dense enough to break Hawkeye's hand. Wanna cry? In Captain America Civil War, look at this scene. Afraid of at first glance, it seems that Wanda is pushing Vision down using her powers, but she actually didn't. She just makes his body so heavy that it sinks to the ground, since she can manipulate Vision's density.
In Spider-Man No Way Home, Peter was able to cure Dr. Octavius. But can we connect this to the original movie? So I had him by the throat, and then I... and then I was here. If we go back to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, we see in the ending that when Otto has Peter in his hands, this happens. It was a gift to be used for the good of mankind. A privilege. Drown it. I'll do it. I think this moment is where the No Way Home Otto comes back in time, and because he is cured, he chooses to sacrifice himself to save Peter. In Spider-Man No Way Home, Peter was able to cure Norman Osborn. But can we connect this to the original movie? If we go back to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, we see in the ending when Peter makes Osborn stab himself using the glider, he says this. Oh. oh. Peter. Don't tell Harry. I think this moment is where the No Way Home Osborn goes back in time, and because he is cured, he thinks about his son and realizes he will be devastated if he learns the truth. In Avengers Endgame, when Hulk wears the gauntlet, this happens. Take it off! Take it off! No, wait, Bruce, are you okay? Uh well, the reason Cap asked Bruce first is because he also experienced it before. Now take down! No! I can do this! In Spider-Man No Way Home, there's a scene where Peter Parker doesn't practice his speech. The dumber version of me that wouldn't have let them help. You didn't rehearse that, did you, Peter? By the end of the movie, when he plans to talk to MJ, we see him practicing. My name is Peter Parker. You don't know me, but I... Uh... Because Spider-Man learns from his mistakes. In Spider-Man No Way Home, look at this scene. Peter's costume here is all CGI, but the VFX department didn't forget to change his shadow when he removes his nanotech suit. In Captain America Civil War, when Tony and Cap fight, Steve removes Tony's helmet. Tony thought Cap would hit his head, but he didn't. Actually, the reason Steve removes Tony's helmet first is because he doesn't want Tony to suffocate when he destroys the arc reactor that supplies power to his suit. Steve still cares for Tony even when they're fighting. And you're gonna miss me. It's gonna be a lot of manful tears. In Avengers 1, when Tony fixes the rotors of the helicarrier by pushing it, both he and Cap almost died. Uh-oh. And that's why in Spider-Man Homecoming, he created mini boosters to help him push heavy things. Hi, Spider-Man. At the end of Avengers Endgame, when Tony gets his hands on all the stones, you can see that his forehead doesn't have blood. But later, blood magically appears. This is because they needed to reshoot the I Am Iron Man scene and made this tiny mistake. In Avengers Endgame, how did Thanos manage to break Captain America's shield? Well, Thanos' blade is made from aura metal, which is crafted from the heart of a dying star. This makes it much harder than the vibranium that Steve's shield is made of. In Iron Man 3, when Pepper picks up the helmet that Tony left his message. First off, I'm so sorry I put you in arms way. That was selfish and stupid and it won't If you look closely, you can see that the right side of the screen, it has this weird vertical glitch. First off, I'm so sorry I put you This is because the helmet has a big crack on the right side. Which is an amazing tiny detail from the VFX department. In Captain America Civil War, when Tony and Steve are fighting. Analyze this fight pattern. Scanning. You can see that when the shield covers a part of Cap's body, Tony's suit compensates by creating an X-ray scan. This shows how capable Tony's suit is. In Spider-Man No Way Home, when the brick is thrown and Daredevil catches it. You can also see Peter's spidey sense being activated here, and he is ready to catch it. Did 
Did you know that in Spider-Man Homecoming, if you look at this scene... Stress him out. Don't do anything stupid. I've seen his cardiogram. If you look at the back, you can see Happy having a hard time lifting Peter's suitcase. And he needs to use his two hands just to lift it. But as soon as Peter holds it, he lifts it with one hand. It's great that the writers didn't forget how strong Peter is and add this tiny little detail. In Spider-Man Far From Home, when Beck and Peter fight the fire elemental, Beck tells Peter not to get too close. Spider-Man, keep your distance! I'm trying! This is an early hint that it's all an illusion created by Mysterio. So, if Peter got too close, he would realize it isn't hot and immediately know what's happening. In Avengers 1, Tony sees that even after all the Avengers got together and fought the Chitauri army, they still almost lost and the battle left significant damage to the city. As a result, in Iron Man 3, Tony creates autonomous armors that can move freely without a pilot, giving him more manpower if a similar attack happens again. In Avengers Age of Ultron, when Tony fights the Hulk, just before he destroys the building, if you look closely at his heads-up display, it shows these points. These are actually internal structural points that, if destroyed, will make the building collapse into itself and won't harm the people around. And if you look here, you can see that Tony fires four missiles just before rushing inside. That's because the building learns from his mistakes. In Iron Man 1, Tony says he never got to say goodbye to his father. I never got to say goodbye to Dan. I never got to say goodbye to my father. So, in Endgame, when he goes back in time, he is finally able to say his goodbye. Good to meet you, Potts. Yeah. Howard. Everything's gonna be all right. Thank you. For everything. In Civil War, why does Cap just throw down the crate on Spider-Man and expect him to survive? I guess he had a point. <laughs> <laughs> If we go back when Peter tries to pull Steve using his web, this is the moment Cap was able to measure how strong Peter is. Because of this, he knows he doesn't need to hold back, and that's why he knows the crate won't squash Peter. You got hard, kid. In Avengers Endgame, when Tony hugs Peter, it's actually a full flip from Spider-Man Homecoming. In Homecoming, Peter thought Tony was hugging him, but he wasn't. Show me your team. Okay. That's not a hug, I'm just grabbing the door for you. We're not, we're not there yet. Here, we see Tony actually hug Peter when he thought he wouldn't. He does all the time. What are you doing? In Captain America Civil War, when Tony visits his friends in prison, you can see that one of his arm is broken. But did you know the exact moment he broke it? If you go back to the airport battle, you can see Wanda throwing some cars at Tony. One of them hits his arm. And you can also see in his heads-up display that it shows his arm has a fracture. Multiple contusions detected. Yeah, I detected that too. Why did the Karen AI that Peter's suit has just suddenly disappears. Would you like me to engage enhanced combat mode? Uh, enhanced combat mode? Yeah. Activating instant kill. No, 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 no. I don't want to kill anybody. Well, the in-universe explanation for this is when Peter created his own suit on the jet, he wasn't able to add an AI companion. Then for the out-of-universe explanation is that the writers removed it so Peter can be his own character and not always an Iron Man's shadow or just a Tony Stark Jr. In the Avengers, when the Tesseract opens the portal for the Chitauri army, you can see Tony's heads-up display change from blue to red. Right. Army. This indicates that his suit has switched to full instant kill mode. Similar to what happens in Peter's suit in Spider-Man Homecoming. Would you like me to engage enhanced combat mode? Uh, enhanced combat mode? Yeah. Activating instant kill. Yeah, this is awesome. In the Avengers, when Tony is fighting the Chitauri army, there is this scene. If you look in the background, you can see a shawarma restaurant. This is the same restaurant the team eats at in the end credits scene. You ever tried shawarma? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. 
I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. It's just a shame that we didn't see Hulk eating at this tiny place. In Spider-Man Far From Home, why did MJ start to suspect that Peter is actually Spider-Man? Well, if you look in this scene when Peter distracts his classmates so he can shoot down the drones. Now, look at the baby mountain goats! Baby mountain goats! Ooh. I see, I see. For a brief second, you can see that MJ is the only one who didn't turn and kept looking at Peter. After Peter goes down, you can see that MJ is still looking at Peter. In Captain America Civil War, look at this scene. At first glance, it seems that Falcon hits Tony without him able to fight back. But if you slow down the scene, you'll see that Tony had just fired a net to catch Falcon. It's so fast that you need to slow down the scene to see it properly. In Iron Man 3, Tony realizes that the autonomous suits he created are not as effective because there's no central control managing them. So, in Avengers 2, he creates Ultron to manage the Iron Legion. If we can harness this power, apply it to my Iron Legion protocol, I see a suit of armor around the world. Well, it didn't work out the way he planned. How could you be worthy? You're all killers. Did you know that in Tony Stark's funeral, if you look in the back, there's this guy. This is actually the kid from Iron Man 3 who gave Tony his super expensive watch. Your sister had a watch? Yeah. I was kind of hoping for something a little more adult than that. <laughs> Careful there, it's a limited edition. <laughs> in Avengers Infinity War, when Tony and the Guardians meet. I'm gonna ask you this one time. Where is Gamora? Yeah, I'll do you one better. Who's Gamora? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Shoot my guy and I'll blast him. Let's go! Do it, Quill! Notice that Tony's blasters resemble the Xenomorph from the Alien movie. This is because, just a few moments before, Peter mentioned the movie in their conversation. Okay, did you ever see this really old movie, Aliens? Let me just say, if aliens wind up implanting eggs in my chest or something and I eat one of you, I'm sorry. I do not want to... Additionally, since Tony's nanotech can recreate weapons based on his thoughts, it's likely that he unconsciously thought about it here. Did you know why Hulk listens to Cap? It's because Steve gave him the respect he deserves. Here Thor calls him Banner. We are not your enemies, Banner. Try to think! <laughs> And Tony also calls him Banner. You're smarter than her. You're Bruce Banner. Yeah! Right, right, right. Don't mention puny Banner. They forgot that Hulk is his own person and wants to be treated as such. So, when Cap called him by his name, he listened. And Hulk. <sighs> Smash. In Spider-Man No Way Home, when Dr. Octavius and Peter meet. What did you just say? Looks like we got competition. You can see that the lights in Doc Ock's tentacles are red, indicating that the AI in his tentacles is in control. Device. After Peter hacks them, the lights turns to blue. Later in the movie, when Peter gives Doc Ock full control of his tentacles, the lights change to white. See you, dear boy. It's good to see you. You're all grown up. <gasps> How are you? This shows that Doc Oct is a gamer who likes RGB lights. Sin, Sin City was a In Avengers Endgame, we see that the gauntlet can change sides. So, why didn't Tony just revert the gauntlet to its original small version so Thanos couldn't use it? <laughs> well, after Hulk snaps, it didn't just burn his body. It also burned the gauntlet, so its capability to change size was gone. I am inevitable. <laughs> Did you know that in Spider-Man Far From Home, when Peter buys the necklace for MJ, if you look in the background, you can see Mysterio already following him. Find Peter Parker!
In Spider-Man Far From Home, Peter gets caught by Brad. Uh, Sorry? Uh, I thought this was the bathroom. This is not what it looks like, just... Yeah. What are you doing? Brad. I'll leave you two alone. Later, when he tries to show it to MJ, the photo is deleted by Edith on the bus. Uh, this is so weird. It was right here on my phone. I, I... Yeah. Later in the movie, when Mr. Harrington says they're going to the opera and everyone is upset, you can see Brad still looking for that picture. And according to legends, to this day, Brad is still looking for it. In Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, at the start of the movie, you can see a tiny red handkerchief in Doctor Strange's chest pocket. This is actually the cloak of levitation because if you look when Strange changes his clothes, he grabs the cloak from the same pocket. In Thor Ragnarok, during the fight between Thor and Hulk, there's this scene. Thor punches Hulk so hard that it creates a shockwave. This must have been a very strong punch since even the cameraman shakes a little. In Captain America Civil War, when Tony fights Cap, his targeting system gets damaged. Targeting system's knackered, boss. Am I balling it? To prevent this from happening again, Tony now adds a homing mechanism to his missiles so they will always hit their target. My only curse is you. In the ending of Thor Ragnarok, notice that when Loki walks in front of Hulk, he gets a little angry. So, King This is because the last time Hulk saw Loki before Ragnarok was during the events of Avengers, where Loki caused massive destruction. But I will not be bullied by- ah! In Avengers Endgame, when Hulk wears the gauntlet, you can see that only the right side of his body is glowing. Compare that to when Tony gets his hands on all the Infinity Stones, and you can see light reaching the other side of his body. This is because Tony made his whole suit act as a gauntlet to contain the stone's power since his body is not enhanced unlike Hulk and Thanos. In Avengers Endgame, when Hawkeye did the test for time travel, do you know the reason Banner put a timer in his suit instead of the same dial they used in the actual mission? Well, Banner knew that when Barton met his family again in the past, he might choose not to come back. Come back! Where are my well? This is also the same thing Steve did at the end when he didn't return. I don't want to set the world on fire. In Spider-Man Far From Home, look at this scene. Stark was right. You do deserve that. Notice that when Beck is giving the glasses to Peter, his hands make a gun gesture. You do deserve that. You, 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 you're not gonna shoot a puppy, are you, Jack? Yeah, in the face. Why? This gives a hint for Peter to know that Beck will try to shoot him. In Spider-Man No Way Home, remember this scene. Oh, my back. That's good. This is actually a reference to this scene. In Avengers Endgame, when the Avengers time travel to the past, look at this scene. If you notice, when Tony lands here, look at his feet. You can see that the nanotech has been removed from his feet first. This is so Tony can land more quietly. This level of detail proves how much effort the animators put into this movie.
In Iron Man 2, when Tony is in his workstation and Pepper visits him, he does this. Boy America. Scouts of America? Yes, it is a worthwhile organization. I didn't physically check the crates, but... If you look closely, you can see that it increases his points, but there are also other points displayed, indicating someone else was playing with Tony before. Many people think it's Rhodey. But I think these points are from Pepper since we all know she likes playing with Tony's balls. Are you out of your mind? Better security! In Avengers Endgame, when the Avengers travel back to the past, Loki copies Captain America's appearance. On my way down to coordinate search and rescue. If you look at Hulk, you can see that he gets confused when Loki transforms. Then, when Loki reverts back to his original self, Hulk gets angry since Loki was able to trick him again. Rescue. On my way down to coordinate search and rescue. I mean, honestly, how do you keep your food? In Avengers Endgame, when Cap goes back in time, he fights his past self but only able to win using cheap tactics. Rocky is alive. So, why did he almost lose despite having more experience? Well, he was holding back his strength since he didn't want to injure his past self and mess up the future. Meanwhile, the past Steve was convinced he was fighting Loki and wasn't holding back at all. I can do this all day. Yeah, I know. I know. In Ant-Man, when Scott infiltrates the Avengers compound, if you look in the back, you can see this weird circle. This was actually created by Thor in Age of Ultron when he used the Bifrost. That man has no regard for long maintenance. In Spider-Man Far From Home, when Peter shuts down the drone. If we slow down this scene, you can see that before shutting down the drone's blasters, Peter webs the drone to a rock first. This is so when the drone loses control, it won't accelerate further and hit the bus he and his classmates are on. Oh!